In this tutorial, we're going to create a clickable image inside of Elementor. And this is what a clickable image is. Here's an image. We hover over it. The little hand appears. This right here is a non-clickable image. We hover over it and we still have our arrow. Nothing changes. You click on it, nothing happens. This one, you click on it and boom, you're on a different website. And that's what we're going to create in this video. This tutorial is part of the Elementor Skills playlist where you gain a solid foundation in Elementor so you can build better and bigger websites. That playlist is linked to in the description down below, so make sure you check it out after you watch this video. And if you have any questions or comments about this specific video, please leave them down below. I try to answer the best I can. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get started. To make an image clickable in Elementor, the first thing we have to do is edit a page with Elementor. So let's go to Pages, and let's pick, let's see, the Services page. That is an image. Any page with an image or any page you want to add an image to, open that page in the Elementor Editor and find the image that you want to make clickable. In this example, we're going to use this one right here. Click on that image. On the left-hand side, there's a link option in the settings. Click on the drop-down and choose either Media File, which will take you to a bigger version of the image, or if you want to have them redirect to somewhere else, you choose Custom URL. And in that case, you can add whatever link you want in here. It can be pulled in dynamically from Elementor. That's advanced. Don't worry about that if you don't know what that means. Or you can just have a link pasted right in here. So if we wanted to have people redirected to, let's say, google.com, just put google.com in there, click on update, and then let's preview our changes. Here's our image. We see when we hover over it, the finger appears, meaning it's clickable. Click on it, and we go to Google. That's how easy it is to make an image clickable. There are a few settings in the gear icon you might want to know about too. Click on the gear icon, and you have the option to open the link in a new window. This is what you want to click in this example that we had here, where we linked to somewhere outside of our site. So if someone clicks on that image, it takes them to Google in a new browser tab, and in the original browser tab, your website's still open. You do not want to have open in a new window turned on if you're linking within your own site, because then you might have people having a bunch of tabs open, and they're all for your site, and that's not good for user experience. So just use this if you're linking somewhere off-site. You can also choose to have a nofollow attribute, which means when search engines come to look at your site, they don't attribute ranking power to the site you're linking to. In search engine optimization or SEO, linking power is shared between websites that are linked together. So if you don't check this box, search engines will be able to attribute the ranking power of this particular page, some of that they will give to the page you're linking to. You still maintain your ranking power, you don't lose any of that, but some of it will be shared. Some percentage of it will be also attributed to the page you're linking to, whether or not the no follow attribute actually instructs search engines and actually listen to it is a matter of for debate. But in theory, what I just explained, that's what happens. You pass on link juice to other sites by linking to them. And in theory, by checking no follow, you don't pass on link juice. You can also set custom attributes. This is advanced. Don't worry about that if you don't know what that is. You can click on learn more to read documentation about what this is right here. And if you don't have Elementor Pro yet, click the link in the description down below to get yourself a copy. It is an affiliate link, so if you buy through that link, I do get a commission, and it does not make it more expensive for you. It's just that Elementor shares that referral income with me, and that's what helps me keep making these videos for free and putting them up on YouTube so you can get better at WordPress and Elementor. So if you buy through that link down below, I really appreciate it. And next up, check out the Elementor Skills playlist right here, which I referenced throughout this video. If you watch those videos, your Elementor skills will be increased. So if you want to get better, watch that playlist. And if you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Alpass from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.